everybody, I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Piqua City Schools Board of Education. Today is Thursday, August 25th. And everyone, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Chair me. Mr. Mitchell. Here. Mr. Frazier. Here. Mr. Bostick. Here. Mr. Ford. Here. Mrs. McMacken. Here. Okay. We've all had a chance to look at the meeting or the meeting minutes from July. Does anybody have any changes to suggest we make? Okay, if not, can I get a motion to approve those meeting minutes? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, the motion carries, and July's meeting minutes are approved. Moving on to our agenda. After reviewing our agenda, if there are no changes to me to be made there, can I get a motion to approve? So move. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, motion carries and tonight's agenda is approved. On to board reports for Upper Valley Career Center. Mr. Bostick, do you have anything? The only thing is um, if you have driven um, in front of UVCC, they um, improved their flow of traffic out there. They put in a parking lot in the front, and then they've got a, uh, a bus exit and entrance to try to ease their traffic situation. So that's what's really been going on out there if you've been on Looney Road and seen that. So it's, it'll, it'll be very nice. It's mostly complete. I think they used to have grass and things to get out there. But it'll help with the flow of traffic and hopefully uh, not cause quite as much congestion there at different times. So that's about it for now. Okay. And they started when? Oh, uh, we had a meeting Monday. I think they started last. Yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday maybe? Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Yes. Okay. They said it went really well. It was, <coughs> they said it was mm -hmm. a really good start. Good. It was a very good start. So, so they're up and running. Good. Very good to hear. Um, yeah, I think we are because there's nothing on agenda items, correct? correct. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, have you all headed up to the front there? <laughs> this is part of the group. It's not in the <laughs> we got another 200 out there. No. Parking lot? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we we had, we got a great group, and we'll make sure they know that. Um, and they're all we've just gone through new teacher orientation last week, and um, there are probably another eight or nine that will be coming to the next month's meeting for introductions as well. <clears throat> Scheduling conflicts, and some of them we've already met since we started hiring back in March. So, if you will, just step up to the mic, make sure you speak into it so that our people at home can can hear you, and um, just like the top. Hi everybody, my name is Ryan Roth. Um, I'm a football coach. I coach the freshman football team at the high school. I am a social studies teacher at the high school and I'm really excited to kind of get into this community and be involved with, you know, whatever whatever they need to be involved with at, at Pick High School. I'm just really excited to be here. So, thank you. Where'd you get that good looking shirt? <laughs> I, got, I, got the, I got the shirt from Bill Neese himself. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Pearlport. Um, I will be teaching 7th grade ELA at Piqua Junior High. And I am just so thankful to be here because I actually student taught at Piqua City Schools two years ago under Jeff, who's a fantastic principal. It was such a great community and a great group of teachers. So I'm really excited to be joining them. We didn't pay her for that. Yeah, no, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be throwing out like. Hi, I'm Paige Stevens. Um, I will be at Spring Creek teaching kindergarten this year. 
Um, and I'm super excited to meet my upcoming class as well as the rest of the faculty that I haven't got to meet. Um, and I heard a lot of great things about PICWA, so I'm really excited um, because everything I've heard so far has been true. So I'm super excited for this year. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm Natalie Blount. Um, I'm also at Spring Creek with Paige. Um, I teach kindergarten. So this is my ninth year overall teaching and I just moved to Piqua in February. Um, funny story, when I moved here I told my husband, I said, I'm gonna work there. And he's like, okay, good luck. Um, so I'm excited to work with um, new staff and to meet the incoming group of five and six year olds. So I'm excited that you guys selected me. Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay Vincent. I'll be the third grade Title I reading teacher at Washington Primary, and I'm just looking forward to being part of a student-centered and caring district. Hi everyone, I'm Beth Maniachi. I'll be teaching third grade at Washington Primary, and I grew up an Indian, and I'm excited to finally have the opportunity to teach little Indians. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Whitney Webb. I'll be at Piqua Central this year teaching fifth grade ELA. And I'm most excited to be working with a district that cares so deeply about their students and uh, meets their needs in all of the ways. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Jen Bargy. I am a fourth grade intervention specialist at Piqua Central. And I am really excited because I just have had such good experience in the interview process and then like some of the others said everything that was said was true when I got into the building so I'm excited to work with the staff and the students thank you hi my name is Cameron Kaiser I'll be teaching geometry over at the high school and I just want to say how thankful I am to be part of this community um, after going through the interviews with uh, Tony and Rob Messick and Scott Bloom I, I quickly realized how lucky I am to be here and I'm, I'm ready to get going so thank you Hi, I'm Tim Wiseman. I'm a social studies teacher at the high school. I also coach freshman football and I do JV basketball, so we came straight from practice. That's why we're <laughs> severely underdressed compared to everybody else. Um, but no, I'm mostly excited just to be part of the community and work with the kids. Everything I've, been, everything I've seen since being here, I've loved. So very excited to get to work. What do you think for, uh, for this group? We got another, another part of coming in September. So. Best of luck oh, to you. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your enthusiasm. You. We're excited to have you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is um, uh, my part. I want to just share that our um, Treasurer's Department um, received an award, and they received that from the Association of the School Business Officials International. Um, the letter says, Congratulations on behalf of the Association of School Business Officials. International, I'm pleased to inform you that Pickle City Schools has received the Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting for the fiscal year ending in 2021. This award represents a significant achievement and reflects your commitment to transparency and high quality finance reporting. Um, it's very true. Jeremy and his team work very hard. Um, they, as, as you're all smiling, you know he receives many awards. It's hard sometimes to get him out <coughs> of the I'm starting to think he has this letter saved on his desktop. <laughs> I just bring it out the every date every year and prints it off. I'm like, hey, guys, look at this one. I got this award this year. Um, and, and it's a tribute, really, to him and his staff, who I think do an excellent job of, of not only tracking money, but making sure it's spent well, and, and, and we are very transparent <coughs> with that. So um, hats off to him and his team, and um, he... He'll be the first to tell you that his, his department works really hard behind him and, and um, supports that work very well. So congratulations to our treasurer and um, his staff for earning that award once again. Thank you. And it's, bravo. <laughs> I definitely don't do it for sure, right? I mean, I have a great staff and I can't do it without everyone's help in the district because it doesn't just happen. I, I, I don't do it all by any means. And um, we work with some really good people. How many years? Have you received this specific Started award? For that particular award uh, probably five or six years ago. So we've gotten that every year. Every I've, year that you've applied. And it's really hard, like the first year, it's sort of like, you know, you're creating the whole model and then so the first year is the most difficult and then you're just continuing that process after that. So um, it was good. Awesome. It's nice to get it from your own organization versus GFOA is great. But Congratulations again. All right, so we'll move on with your agenda, Mr. Hiddle. 
All right. Were there any questions about the monthly fiscal reports? I will be bringing you back some monthly fiscal reports and end of year fiscal reports at the September meeting. We have found an issue with the new software that has thrown me bonkers for about a week. Um, and so things were not adding up correctly in the report. There was some coding that had to be changed in the software. Now it's doing it correctly, so we'll rerun all that. And we'll bring all that back. I'll have to take it to the county for approval. And um, but we caught it before we started the CAFR process, which we've been working on, um, which is what that award was for. So we've already been working on the next one of those. <laughs> so I know Sean, you're excited. Um, but we caught all that before we got our audit done, so it won't it won't damage anything. It's just it's you. You don't know until you start dissecting it that, oh, this stuff didn't turn out right. So we found the stuff and we'll be fixing it. It doesn't change any of the cash numbers. It's just encumbrances and appropriations and things like that that need to be updated. So uh, all the cash numbers will end up being the same. So, uh, the next thing that's on there is uh, accepting the tuition rates for in and out of state tuition. Again, we don't use these. We have open enrollment, but the state requires us to uh, approve them. So those are listed there. And then there is a report that we have to file um, with the Ohio um, Auditor of State when we um, hold commercial paper. And so due to interest rates being very low, uh, commercial paper usually gives us a better bang for our buck uh, on the investment end. And so we have some commercial paper, and that's that report that I'm asking you to approve tonight. That's all I have. Okay, anybody have any questions? Okay, if not, can I get a motion to approve the treasurer's agenda? So moved. Second. Okay, um, Jeremy, can you please call roll? Mr. Frazier. Aye. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mrs. McMacken. Aye. Mr. Mitchell. Okay, the tre treasurer's agenda has been approved. And moving on to the superintendent's report with Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Um, thought we would start with the buildings, just giving a little bit of an update of some of the work that they're doing and um, getting set for the year. I, I would tell you that Mr. Messick is at um, a, a volleyball game tonight. We're playing Sydney and they're having a special night, so the um, ad team is there um, supporting that. that program so um, I guess we can start with Mr. Clark of the junior high if you'd like to come up and share some of your work and sure. how we're getting ready for um, the junior high to open up. Good evening everybody. Um, worked with our building leadership team multiple times throughout the summer to start to draft our building goals for this year. We'll be sharing the draft with our full staff next week and kind of refining those but this is what we have so far to talk about our focus for the year. Um, two main goals that we have the first one being academic and the overarching goal being that 100% of our students will uh, reach mastery in all standards in all subject areas. It didn't make sense to us to not aim for 100% for everybody as our overarching goal. Looking at what we're going to do as adults to help kids get there, we have two main uh, adult implementation uh, factors that we're going to do. Number one is that it, kind of coinciding briefly with the new um, Ohio evaluation system component that teachers have to uh, deal with this year with having high quality student data. We're going to incorporate that into our goal to assist them in implementing that into their own personal goals as well. So really focusing on using high quality student data, whether it be state testing data, Procore you've heard about multiple times over the years, IXL, other programs we use, using that data to really understand where our kids are academically. And then the second part of that goal is to take that data and change how we teach or plan how we teach based on the data, where our strengths, where our weaknesses, and then using that data to approach it that way. So that's, that's a real brief summary of our first goal. Our second goal is an SEL goal, a social emotional learning goal. And really, um, in response to, we did a survey last year through uh, Mindy's office, the uh, Panorama survey. And one of the things we found is that our students are reporting to us that they don't feel as engaged with our school as, as we want them to be. Um, the school engagement looks different based on the questions on the survey, but ultimately it's saying it's not where we would expect them to be or want them to be. So we want to work on that. So a couple things we're going to do as adults to make 100% of our kids feel engaged. 
Um, we're going to survey them initially. Um, again, we'll do the one of the things we'll do is do the first round of the panorama survey again to see where they are to start the year. Um, it'd be interesting to see where they are to start the year because kids a lot of times are a little more excited at the beginning of the year. So our team talked about that to see where they are, and then based on that, and then start to set some true, um, I guess, action steps for how do we go after that. So again, kind of like the first goal, looking at what the data tells us and then coming up with action steps to say, okay, how do we get kids more engaged and feel more connected to our school? So that's just real brief summary. And we're gonna be working with staff last year with our goals. It was an ongoing process all year long. So I, I assume it'll be the same thing this year. We'll, we'll react to what we're seeing and, and what the data is telling us and, and make those adjustments as needed. Other things that are going on, can I hit the construction? Sure. Kind of did. I know Jeremy probably want to talk about that a little bit, but uh, it's been another busy summer at the junior high with uh, the remodeling project. Um, it, we're down to the wire. Obviously, teachers will be coming in next Monday, and hopefully we'll have uh, as much done as possible. We still have a little bit of flooring left to do, some kind of finishing touches here and there, but it's been a really busy summer, and it looks amazing. I think a couple of you have at least been out and seen the building, um, and it, it's just awesome. Uh, having been there as long as I've been to be able to see the, the transformation and the transition we've made and, and what it's going to be and how good it's going to be for so much longer, uh, I'm excited and so appreciative of you guys for supporting that and the community for supporting that because it's, it, it's going to be awesome for our kids. So, but, and, I, and we'll be done, right, Jeremy? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be you, done. You, you are at your last phase. You are... Yeah. Today really started. I might be at my last phase if it keeps going. So <laughs> hey, it was funny. Uh, today, today, today really looked like things were getting done. Like things were getting moved out of the hallways and into the classrooms, and so. Hey Jeff, when I went out last week with Jeremy, it was it was amazing. Anybody that gets a chance, go out and see it. It is absolutely the transformation was unbelievable. And it, and it we're just so fortunate to have such wonderful facilities and the and the. The forethought and planning to keep them that way, I think, is, is huge. I think it can be understated. I told Jeff one of the good things about what's happened, maybe in the timing. Um, the class that's coming into the junior high right now has never seen anything but new buildings. They were not in the old Nicklin um, kindergarten, and they've not seen any of our old buildings, so they've had new buildings throughout. You walk in that junior high right now, you think you build it this summer. I mean, mm -hmm. it looks like it's brand new. Yeah. So um, nice. it's pretty cool how, how it's turned out. It's awesome. And it matches the scheme across the entire district in all five buildings. It's now that red, white, and blue scheme, minus the red and blue that is missing at the high school because there is no red and blue base uh, paint available. So um, we'll fix that when there's paint available. Questions? Right. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank you. Mr. Butler from Pippa Central. So the great thing about this year is that uh, the admin worked really hard over the summer to kind of streamline some things. So our goals are very closely aligned with the junior high's goals, and I'm sure Ross and Eric's goals will be closely aligned with ours. So you'll, you'll start to see some of those progressions. Uh, I'm going to start with, we talked about uh, the why, and the why we came up with this summer is because our Pickwick kids are worth it. They absolutely are to put in all this work to build brand new facilities, uh, and we still have working toward our success bound. We, we've um, made a commitment to that and we're going to come back to that and really get that in front of our kids again this year and our families um, So that's kind of what drove our building goals. My building goals specifically like Jeff are 100% um, of students will demonstrate grade level mastery in all subject areas and we'll use the same high quality student data and Along the same lines as Jeff. We really feel that a sense our kids need a sense of belonging with everything going out in the world um, you, you see a lot of people just needing something to belong to, and so we're really going to focus on that. As Jeff said, it aligns back to OTES and, and kind of that language. And so what we did is, so when we communicate with our kids and our families, we kind of um, came up with some other statements that us as a staff are going to do. Uh, include using pronouns we and our instead of me and mine. Uh, we'll collaborate, plan together to sing, dance, dress up, prepare authentic and engaging learning experiences for our students to feel, touch, see, smell, and hear. We'll regulate ourselves and we'll also really work really hard at regulating our students. We, we're going to set high standards for all students. 
With everything that's gone on the past couple years, there may be a tendency to, when you get a kiddo in your class that has some gaps, to lower those standards. We're really focused on and we're saying a lot, our expectation is grade level mastery for all. No matter where we get them, our expectation is going to be the same. Now how we get those kids to that expectation, that may look a little bit different based upon the kids' individual needs. But our expectation is to get kids at grade level by the time they leave um, that grade at Pico Central. Um, so that's kind of a, a little change in thinking a little bit. Uh, we're making a commitment to call parents with specific feedback, uh, focused on the good. And if there is some bad, we're making sure we're communicating with specific feedback, not only about what happened, but also being problem solving and offering parents some strategies. So we work together as a partnership to put kids in the best places possible. We'll con communicate consistently and effectively with each other, our students and our parents. And one of the things that we're going to talk a lot about and makes a big, huge impact on kids, when you think about who impacted you in school, probably somebody spent time when they didn't have to with you. It could be eating lunch, could be before school, after school, could be they show up at an athletic event, they show up at a choir concert. So really encouraging our staff to get out there and spending time when you don't necessarily have to, you know, with students. Uh, another thing we're, we're going to focus on that we can measure is we want to give at least 20 high fives, fist bumps, or hugs um, to staff, to students, um, to really make sure that, hey, we're all in this together, we're all engaged. And the last couple of things, we're going to use positive words, positive actions, positive bank, body language, and those are going to create our positive habits. The other data point we're going to take a look at, and I talk with our staff a lot, is, is a qualitative data point and really focused on the impact we can really have on everyone's lives. And sometimes that's measured in the same year, but also sometimes that's measured years down the road when you see them walk across the stage, when you see them out in the community. And now, you know, I've been in, at Pickle long enough, I'm having kids of kids I had in class. So seeing the impact the efforts have made sometimes come down. So keeping that in mind as well as, you know, really focused on, uh, on the impact and being tough and continuing to do what we do. Even if we don't initially see the impact, that impact could be measured 5, 10, 20 years down the road. So, a um, couple of things coming up. Tomorrow's the big day. Uh, class list will be posted at 4 p.m. on the windows. Uh, we've had a lot of calls about that. Kids are super excited. I do want to say this. Our parents have done an amazing job already before class lists are even posted of getting their OneView forms filled out. Uh, we have currently about 765 enrolled, and we're looking at about 250 left that, who haven't done their OneView forms. Um, so we have over 500 parents that have really done their one-view forms, and that tells us the kids are excited, um, the parents are excited and ready to go. Next week, August 30th, 31st, September 1st, our open house. We'll also have Kona Ice available, so if you want to purchase Kona Ice, they do take cash or credit. They'll be out front. Feel free to enjoy some Kona Ice. September 8th, our fifth grade fall planning. September 9th, our tribe day. Our September 20th is Farm Day, September 23rd, Junior Farmer's Market, and September 26th is Picture Day for Pickle Central. So we're excited. We're ready to get started. We're going to hit the ground running, um, and we're looking forward to an awesome school year. Any questions? I'm going to ask you, too, how did summer school go? Amazing. Was uh, it? it was absolutely amazing. Um, case in point, we've talked a lot about it, and we know kids have a lot of technology in their hands. Um, you know, YouTube and streaming services and all that. Um, so case in point of how excited the, the kids were and how I, I feel really good where our students are at. We had about 400 books that were to be discarded. Um, I could not throw them in the dumpster, so we put them on a table, handed them out, gave them all away. And just to see a, you know, kindergartners and even some of the junior high students um, grab some books, that just tells you, hey, they're ready. They're ready to get back to a little bit of more normal than we have been able to. Uh, the kids were awesome. The staff did an awesome job. And even in a short amount of time of three weeks, we saw some pretty big gains of kiddos because it was small group and it was focused. So, um, you, you know, as a lead principal and you're in the building, it gets kind of lonely some days. But just having the kids back in, um, high-fiving them, seeing them excited, uh, really, you know, put a little boost in it. So. Uh, I, I thought summer school went amazingly well. Good. That's good to hear. How'd it go at your building? Our right. students were at UCIS. With yep. Oh. So that's the second year in a row. Um, I, I think for the kids that were there, it went very well. We, we had uh, two folks teaching, one math, one language arts. That was the focus. And the, 
the reports from them where the kids were there working hard. Uh, we need to work a little harder and be a little better about, um, I guess, making sure we get more kids there. We, we offered it to everybody. We reached out to a lot of people. And we're, we didn't get the buy-in we hoped in terms of the numbers. Mm -hmm. Kids that came did a great job. And I think that the, the benefits are there. Mm -hmm. We just need to get more kids there. So it was a lower number well, yeah, of attendance. And the, the kids that were enrolled or what whatnot in summer school, they came. Our, our attendance was better this year than last. Yeah. It still wasn't great. It wasn't yeah. as great as we hoped. K-6 was very good. Very good. And even we had some late additions. Um, we had, even had a kiddo come. So summer school ended on a Thursday. We had a couple kids show up on Friday riding their bikes into school ready to go. Oh. So that just shows the impact that we're already making on those kiddos. So, yeah. Um, I think we had a student show up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't never, nobody had ever made contact that they were going to come, but I think a younger sibling was coming. So they just showed up. They and came we, too. We just and, and I think that's the great thing about our summer school program. We have the flexibility to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we're fortunate enough to be able to staff it and we welcome them on in. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Ian. <clears throat> Mr. Loudenbach, Spring Creek. Real quick. Can I read a story to us? I was, Sarah said I should. I, uh, it's one time I actually sort of no. Not once. But I will give you the overview. So good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, so a lot of things that I'm going to talk about are very similar to what these gentlemen just shared. A lot of great work went into the summer, working with the ad team, bringing in our district leadership and building leadership teams to really determine what is going to have the greatest impact on our building and our district. So that was really great work, um, which leads to an exciting school year. So, so our, our goal one is very academic based. We are looking for 100% um, of our students to be on grade level for math and reading. Uh, I, I really like what Keith just said. It, you know, that includes everybody. That 100% really just includes everybody. So I like that, Mark. So, what, so we really want to focus on what are we going to see in the classroom specifically from our adults, uh, from our teachers. And we're something that Eric and I have been collaborating and talking about with Shannon and Sarah is active engagement in our building. We really need to see students really engaged in their learning. We need to see teachers engaged in the teaching. We always use the terminology in the teaching arena. Um, we're starting to talk with the staff too, you know, within this active engagement, really think about less you, more them. So that way you're hearing the students, they're collaborating more, um, and you're the facilitator of the learning. So those are some of the big pieces, um, you know, really communicating high expectations and using very content-specific evidence-based strategies. So a lot of times we get wrapped up in talking activities and those sort of things. We really want to focus heavily on what strategies as a team are we going to use to, to help our students and uh, come back and talk about those good and the bad and the ugly and, and move forward with uh, what we think is best. Um, we really want to focus on high-level high questioning so that we're getting students thinking at a higher level. So those are really some of the big key components. And that's, again, like they had mentioned, all driven from the OTES rubric that teachers are evaluated from a specific language. So it's all connected to what, to what we're doing. So um, goal two, again, is going to be focused on behavior traits or character traits, SEL as well. So what we're really, really looking to do here is get back to teaching specific character traits. Um, so again, 100% of students will model expectations and behavior that create a positive climate uh, of openness, respect, and care. So some of the things that we are looking for, and this is, this is a building wide, I think goal one is kind of more specific to teachers, but this one is for, for everybody, we wanna see this. Uh, we're gonna really look at teaching and modeling and reinforcing the defined character traits through read aloud. So a lot of this work is gonna happen through books. I'll kind of give you an example of that in just a second. Um, direct teaching modeling, we want to see your staff absolutely putting on that, that display every day of what we expect. So, and then positive interactions. So each month we are going to focus on a specific character trait. And within that character trait, we're, again, we're going to teach it, focus that teaching through literacy and all the other things I mentioned. Um, we're going to give part of our PBIS program is we're going to pass out tickets for those students who are 
displaying that character trait and really sharing with them why they, they earned that ticket. So building that climate and culture up and some of the things we're going to focus on are respect, responsibility, kindness, which are obviously our pillars here in the community, and then honesty, perseverance, self-discipline, slash control, um, trustworthiness, empathy, and fairness. So those will be the character traits with you those each month. Um, we're also going to do something that Mr. Thompson and I have been talking about for a few years is one book, one school. Uh, we're calling it One Book, One Building because that's kind of already been coined. So the book that we've chosen for this year is called The Invisible Boy. The story is basically uh, centered around a student who isn't really included in his school setting. So we kind of see, can't remember. Yeah, the front you see it's in color, and the back you can see it's gray. So throughout the story, where it it's lacking that inclusivity piece, he doesn't feel like he's welcome. He doesn't have friends. He's not the cool kid. Um, there's a student who moves in, who is um, I believe I forget what's his name's Justin. Brian's the main character. Justin's the student who moves in. He's he's different. He eats lunch with chopsticks, and he likes different things than the other students. And Brian slips him a note one day just saying, hey, you know, I really thought you, at lunch you were eating the chopsticks was pretty cool. So that just that initiation caught Justin's <coughs> attention. Long story short, they become buddies. He goes from being gray, transparent, so to speak, to full color because that inclusivity part takes place. So it's a really cool story. So we're going to read that to all. Each teacher got a book. Every staff member actually got a book. And we're going to display that throughout the building. Our building theme this year will be based on that. Um, we're going to read it on the first day, and then we're going to do some activities throughout the, the year that really hit on those character traits and that inclusivity part. So that's a big that's a big thing going on this year. Uh, we're going to continue with our SEL stuff, zones, and regulations. Another cool feature we have is an Indian of the Month, where we're going to recognize those students who are really displaying the character traits. We used to do one, two students per grade level. In the past, we're going to do a student from each classroom this year, each month, and they'll get a yard sign to go home that has that character trait on it. So those are those are the big things happening this year. So any questions? Any questions? Thank Sounds you. good. Mr. Hughes from Washington. Good evening. Um, so with that, our goals are very, like we talked about, very similar. So our main goal, our first goal is the same thing. 100% of our students will be mastering grade level content. Um, ours is set up a little bit different though. The way we broke ours down, still using the evaluation rubric because we've talked a lot this summer of why do we have multiple different measuring sticks? Why are we doing multiple different things? So still using the rubric, still using the language out of it. But ours is based off of what do we want our staff to do with students, what do we want our staff to do with each other, and what do we want our staff to do with the community. So our, our team talked about the engagement piece, but it wasn't just engaging our students, it was engaging and working with each other and engaging our families. So ours has kind of taken a lot of the language and tied all of that together. Um, so like as Ross said, we're trying to do engagement strategies, questioning techniques in the classroom, so that's with the students with each other. Uh, we're working on working as a team to analyze data, what are students' needs, and they're our students, not just my students, so what are we doing with each other? And then um, the last piece of that for the first goal is, is what are we doing with our, with our families? Um, communicating and engaging our families in our building activities. Communicating and engaging what we're doing in the classroom. Had a conversation the other day of you know, sometimes that shift of, hey, if I don't see a paper going home, well, how do I know something was going on? We can still engage our families in sending dojo messages out, sharing pictures, what are we doing, having, hey, our kids read these books today, talk to your student about this. So trying to provide ways that our families can connect and engage with their students about school. I know my kids, I've asked them every day, um, they start school on Tuesday. What do you guys do today? Uh, don't know. And that's the same kind of thing. So if we kind of provide some of those prompts of, hey, this is something we did, then it makes it a little bit easier to have those conversations with your kids. Uh, our second goal is also about 100% of our students are going to demonstrate our, um, our PBIS pillars, respect, responsible, and kindness. 
um, re trying to make a push for that. Last year we had our at-home pride cards that we, we displayed. We had some things that went home so families could recognize students for, hey, they were respectful, they were responsible at home. They did things I didn't ask them to do, they just did it. And then we recognized kids at school for that. So same kind of thing, it's what is our staff doing with our students? We're wanting our staff to model those expectations and behaviors with our students, creating that classroom where students want to be and feel connected. What are our staff doing with each other? Well, we're working with each other to help provide what our students need. It might be working with our behavior team. It could be working with Samaritan Behavior Health, our counselors, our admin. But our staff is reaching out for our students on that. And then what are we doing with families? Uh, trying to make sure that we're being appropriately communicating, engaging our families, trying to make them feel welcome to our building as well. So I know Ms. Pence has been working on um, Working on Indian days, setting up some different things. She's got a lot of QR codes posted all around uh, the cafeteria right now. Of just, hey, I want to volunteer. Here's a here's a thing you can scan and fill out. Uh, what would you like to volunteer for? Or um, Dojo, they sent us a big banner. So we've got a you know things that we're trying to get parents connected with, um, trying to get on that right foot to begin with. We had some of those conversations at kindergarten um, screening days, trying to push some of that out there too, so that all families get there. One thing with that, trying to make sure everyone is, some, is connected and aware of some of the changes we're doing. Um, last year, first day, first week of school, I know it was first time for myself and, uh, and Robin, our secretary, I think I about had a heart attack on day one when it was walk out, find your adult, and go. And I'm like, whew, that's a little bit scary. So it went fairly well. I don't like to implement big change in the middle of the year, so it was Let's review it. Let's see how it works. Things will settle down. And then uh, Shannon and I went and, and did a couple of visits to try to get some different ideas. So with that, we are changing up a few things with our dismissal procedures. Our drop-off is very similar, but this is a flyer or handout I'm going to give to every single family because you never know when you're dropping a student off or when you got to pick somebody up. So here's a handout that we posted. The big things about drop-off is when to drop students off. We get, sometimes we get students that get dropped off and we're in meetings and we don't have supervision until certain times. It's not always the safest thing to drop students off before. So we're asking that families drop students off at 845. That's when our doors open. That's when our adults are out and supervising students. Um, w the way our building is set up, we can't turn left into the parking lot because then we back up traffic everywhere. Well, that happens, so it's trying to reiterate turning right into our parking lot off the of sunset. Um, so our drop-off is, is pretty well the same. And then one thing, my kids, every time I drop them off, they kind of get irritated with me. I pull in, here's the sidewalk, open the door, you can get out. I don't have to drop you off right at the front door. So trying to speed that process up, trying to get our kids in so we can get them breakfast and get them to class, um, you know, and get them moving that way. The second page of it is kind of that visual of making sure we're going around the, around the block. What does that look like? Um, and then the last picture of it is a little bit of a change. Our, our end of the day pickup is changing. So you'll notice we've got different colored cones on the sidewalk. Those aren't the colors we used. I think we have um, orange, blue, green, uh, pink, white, yellow. We've, we have six different colored cones that we ordered this summer. So in the past, our curb area, in the front we had two different lanes of traffic just felt it wasn't safe <coughs> um, hey this line stop this line go we got kids crossing over cars so we're going to cone that off and we're going to go to one lane of traffic just feel that it's safer so we've got two pickup options if you're staying in your car that's the curb lane if you want to get out of your car like parents have in the past I want to greet my kids when they come we're asking that you park on Sunset or on um, Park Avenue and walk to the south gym doors we'll have all of our kids are going to the gym this year that helps out when it's raining, helps out when we have bad weather. Everyone's in one spot, um, and parents will come, families will come to the South Gym doors. They'll show a sign of who they're getting. We'll call those kids. We'll bring them to you. So instead of, hey, we're outside, find your adult and go, you can still pick up that way, and we can go that way. And then our cones, we've got cones set up inside that match our cones on the curb. We'll still call names like we have in the past. We'll just line them up where they need to go. We'll bring them out right to the cars and get the cars moving. So I posted a video today on our website. Um, this is posted on our website. So if you want to check out the video, I shared that out with families, posted that to the website today. Um, the driving in there in the beginning of it, um, it was 
the video is kind of interesting, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. So hopefully, uh, hopefully everything works out. Officer Walters was out there with us. I had staff mock it up, had some students come in, mock it up, so we could create the video to try to give an idea of what's it going to look like. But we all know that day one, it's going to be a little different. So we do appreciate the patients working through it and um, trying to figure out how many people we're going to have in each line is going to be a work in progress. But the ultimate goal was safety. We had kids that there were some close, close calls with cars moving, not paying attention, not wanting to stop or park into a parking spot to load their kids. Um, so we had a few things that way. And then we had some kids that, hey, they just leave at the beginning and they kind of walked where they shouldn't have walked and then we had to get them and bring them back. So just making sure that our kids are going home where they're supposed to, they're getting home safely. Uh, it's always a day one goal. We get them in, we feed them, we get them home to where they're going and that's kind of that goal that this is driving. So any questions? So the parents have to come up to the gym door? And They've got two options. If they want to get out, if they want to stay in their car, they pull right along the curb lane like we do right now. So they're going to wrap around um, Park Avenue, um, Parkway, Sunset, and just stay in that line. We'll bring them to them. If they wanted to get out of their car, because if you were there at, at dismissal, we probably have 75 adults standing outside. Yeah. So if you're wanting to get out of your car, we're asking that you park out on Park Avenue or Sunset and then meet at the gym door. So we've got two options. Stay in your car, we'll stay in the curb lane. You wanna get out and greet the kids, park on Park or park on Sunset, and then we can walk to the building and do that. But just walk out of the building and here we go um, was a little bit unsafe. The other thing we had was K-1 kids and some of their siblings would go out the front doors and second, third graders would go out those um, out the, the doors by the music room. So we split our staff up, we split our radios up. Sometimes parents would go to the front when their kids were on the side, sometimes they go to the side when their kids were in the front. And it just, we feel like having the kids in one central location, having the older kids sit there with their, with their younger siblings, we feel it'll work. But, but like I said, the, that video kind of shows it down. If you're staying in your car, if you're parked in front of the building in that curb lane, you gotta stay in your car and we'll bring the kids to you. If you wanted to park and get out, we, we ask you to come to those South Gym doors and we'll bring the kids there. So, Spring Creek has done it similar, right? Yep. This, yep. Over the years, and it's worked really well out there. Oh, yeah. it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. It really adds a layer of safety. Yeah, because I completely avoid that area at yeah. school's out because it scares me because kids just dart out. Yeah, and I live kids. up there, and so. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Kids just dart out when... So the other thing we're going to do, too, is we have a handful of kids who, where we're in the community, we have a handful of kids who will walk home. We have a handful of kids who will ride their bikes home. Um, we, have a, we had a staff member out at the crosswalks every day, but cars don't always pay attention. We had a couple kids that don't pay attention as well, and there were some close calls. So what we're planning on doing, and this is something I've done in the past, is we're going to get our cars through. And then once we get our cars through, then we're going to have our students that are walking, we'll walk them to the crosswalk. The kids that are getting their bikes, we'll walk them out, get them to the crosswalk, and make sure they, they, they go with the adults. But we want to get that big rush of cars out, get our kids out before we have kids walking, too. Um, the one thing that I don't know how it's going to work is with it, having that four-way right there. We ran into it last year where the backup wasn't getting our kids loaded. The backup was that four-way stop. So cars just couldn't make it through quickly so our kids were loaded our kids were ready so we'll just kind of have to see what it's like and evaluate after this first week and mm -hmm. kind of go from there but um, that, that making sure kids the other thing we would have is parents would park in our parking lot and then they'd wave their kids across it's like no we got cars moving we got to stop you need to come across here to get them mm -hmm. so we want to try to eliminate that so the one issue that I know that we've talked about that I'm not sure how to solve is we're going down to one lane instead of two in the front of the building. Well, that, that makes it hard for people that need to come in for meetings to be able to get into our parking lot and park. That's one thing I've got to kind of figure out how we need to do that. But we need to be strategic on when we're planning those and when we're having those meetings too. Um, but that's one thing that I, that I didn't like is parents will park in the parking lot. Hey, walk across, come across here. And kids aren't watching, cars aren't watching, just trying to make it a safer, safer event. So. And like I said, if you watch that video, if you got some feedback, let me know. We're going to try to tweak things as we can go. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to each of the principals for your reports.
Um, just a reminder for people that are at home um, watching that our Indian days are all next week and those have been advertised and announced. You can also find all that information on our website. You're welcome to call the school or the board office and we'll be able to get um, that information to you as well. Um, all of our sports programs for the fall are up and going and they're doing some, some really, really great things on our golf teams, our girls tennis, cross country. I think their night meet is the 10th of September. Mm -hmm. That's a great event if you've not been to that. Um, volleyball tonight against Sydney, they're doing some fun things there. Um, our soccer girls soccer team did a really nice um, event last night to support um, the Vandalia team who lost uh, a player to a senseless shooting in their community mm -hmm. and um, they wore the jersey of, of her and um, gave each player uh, a really nice um, yellow rose and um, just did a, a fantastic job. And it was just such a, a, a touching thing that they did. Um, band, show, choir, and cheerleaders have worked entire summer on their programs and they're going to be there to, to, to keep everything going. Um, our first home football game is tomorrow. There's going to be a um, tailgate party at 545 sponsored by the Boosters. I think they're doing that in conjunction with um, Thistle downtown. And then um, <clears throat> next week, um, be the, the last Friday going into um, our school year will be the big rally, um, pep rally on Thursday. And then our rival game against Troy on, on Friday. So um, big events coming up. And, um, just a real kudos to our coaches and our staff for everything that they've done to get ready for this year and the patience for our junior high and high school staff for um, waiting to, to get all this construction stuff done so they can um, get into their classrooms. So a lot of really good things there. Um, we touched a little bit on um, the renovations. So um, this is really the, the kind of final year of our five-year plan. The only thing we would have left is our kitchen renovations at the high school, which we'll do next year. We'll do some playground renovations. Um, at the elementary level, but otherwise things will be done. We, we did a lot of flooring this, this summer, um, paint. Again, we talked about the color schemes. We don't have any more of the 70s um, yellows, greens, and browns in, in the building. And um, it's really uh, very attractive, and the students are going to see that same color scheme throughout the, the district. Um, we have some additional classroom space that we put in. Our guidance counselor section out at the high school is much, much better, uh, much more in a nice um, position for our students to use. And. Um, we talked about this before, but renovating the high school really cost a fifth of what it would have cost if we were ever to look at building a new building. And we believe that building is going to be set for another 50 years and beyond. So it's really has been modernized, um, but it has saved the community um, quite a bit of money. And you can't use um, OSC funds anymore to do like commons areas or CPAs or, or, or Hartzell Center for Performing Arts and those kinds of things. And I don't think you can beat what our high school already has. So. I think we did really well um, in that. So just a special thanks to Jeremy and um, Sean Shoemaker, our, our facilities manager, as well as Eric, our technology crew, for all the extra work they've had to put into to everything. So we'll arrange for an open house when we get everything as finalized as we can and we get the school year going. We'll find a time where if the community wants to come out, they can take a look at it. I think they'll be really proud of uh, what's, what's been accomplished. Other than that, the only fun thing um, if you haven't been out to the high school and seen the senior parking lot um, they've done their painting this year and there are some really really cool spots you'll have to go out and see what they've done um, well I was there are so many to talk about but two are right next to each other look like cell phones and it looks like they're texting to each other about oh, being seniors yeah. and it's really just a cute um, cute thing so if you if you haven't done that and again public you're welcome to go out there and see the senior spotlights they, they design them themselves they paint them themselves and they put together some pretty cool ideas. Um, other than that, um, Mindy is going to talk a little bit about our gift to plan for the year. So every year we have to approve a uh, gifted plan and it has to follow the uh, st uh, standards of operation for gifted for the state of Ohio. It pretty much does. Uh, There's really no major changes to it than what we've done in the past. Um, just a few minor tweaks here and there just based on numbers. So does anyone have any questions about the plan that was submitted? Mindy, do this. I didn't know that the classroom teachers did so that's, what that was changed the last five years is, was when that changed. So anytime um, you have gifted students within your classroom, you are providing their service and you need 15 hours of professional development um, each year for and I always get this wrong, I have to look it up. It's each year for four years. After the fifth year, it's hours by district's discretion. So we have, um, we're fortunate enough to be working uh, with a company that provides all that PD online. 
So it's uh, self-paced, self-paced, uh, so the teachers can work on that after the school day. And they don't have to miss classes to get PD then. Any questions? All right, thanks. Thank you. Let me go on to my agenda. Yeah. All right. Please. I'd like to recommend the board approve the attached list of donations and grants to Pickle City Schools. Uh, we have a really nice donation from the Pickle Education Foundation for the Junior Farmers Market. Um, that happens over at um, PCIS. And um, if, again, if you haven't been to it, it's the coolest thing. It's over in the garden. And um, students get to participate in a farmer's market where they get to go around and um, purchase vegetables and see different things and talk to some vendors. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, we also had a number of people that donated meals to our band camp this year, um, which was a fantastic thing. Every day the students got a different meal provided to them. So we'd like to really um, show our appreciation to El Heredera. This and that candy on Main, Hartzell Propeller sponsored a meal. Sunset Meats provided um, stuff for us for how to have a cookout on their last day of band camp and then east of Chicago. Um, they were all very gracious uh, um, su supplying that for the students, so we appreciate that. Recommend the board approval of the established bus routes for the bus stops for the 22-23 school year. Those are all set and um, they're attached. And um, just a reminder to parents that the first couple weeks, you know, the bus drivers are learning the, the student routes and their names and they're trying to get them to do the place of safety as well as learning the rules. As students get enrolled to school, new students, they get out of the bus stop. So the first couple weeks aren't going to be the exact times. There is some flexibility there. and. We do appreciate the parents' um, flexibility and their, their patience on that. I'll send a reminder out by phone, but parents parents are pretty respectful, but we just like to remind people that those first couple weeks might might be the exact time that it says that, that they're going to pull up there because there's just some so many factors that influence that. I recommend board approval the attached Title I building um, surveys for Pickle Central and Spring Creek in Washington. We are what's called building wide, so we, we use the Title I funds to service all students. So in doing so, we want to make sure we're getting feedback from parents about their perceptions of the program and what's going on so that we can make adjustments in our program. So those surveys go out each year to parents, and it just gives them a chance to give us some feedback so we can make those adjustments and make sure we're meeting their students' needs. And that's it. Okay, thank you. If nobody has any questions. Can I get a motion to approve the superintendent intendant's agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The superintendent's <clears throat> agenda is approved. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lyons, please proceed with the personnel agenda. Thank you. Um, you got to meet a, small, or a, a large group. Uh, we had about 22 total that participated in new teacher orientation last week. Uh, we provided all of that um, with our own teams. Um, S Scott, Mindy, Amy, Kiera, Teresa, over a three-day period, two days of intensive kind of anything about what we do in PICWA from Procore and IXL and plan book to SEL and um, our coaching teams working with our new folks and kind of getting to know them because they're going to be out in the buildings working with them um, initially as they get started. You'll get to meet the rest of those folks. Um, on that third day, we try to process a little bit all the things that they learn because it's a lot to take in. Um, but then we also gave them a tour of the community on a bus, which was which was fun, I think, for them to be able to really see where their kids are coming from. I mean, they could hear us talk uh, about a lot about our kids and our community, but I think it, it's good for them to be able to really get out there and see. And then they get to have Lugina, and she's a kind of a riot on the bus anyway, our, our transportation director. So that was really good. Like I said, in September, we'll bring the rest of those folks back in as we can get them in. Um, on the agenda, um, as far as the notes go, the one thing is you saw Mindy Gregerson's uh, retirement resignation that's going to be in December, uh, I believe. So congratulations to her and also thankful for all the work she's done in that area because it is a giant, giant challenge uh, every single day. So uh, it'll be tough to replace, but we'll start that process pretty soon um, to find somebody that's going to be really good for that spot. Um, and then outside of that, you did see some unique kind of resignation things that happened there in the last month that were 
odd, but, but we got better. I mean, honestly, the people that are in that new group pool last week are just amazing. So I have no reservations at all. Um, and questions about the agenda, uh, the personnel agenda, or any items that you saw there. All right. Thank you. Okay. After hearing the <coughs> personnel agenda, if there's no other questions, can I get a motion to approve? We'll move. Second. Okay, Jeremy, please call roll. Mr. Ford. Uh, aye. Mr. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Frazier. Aye. Mr. Bostick. Aye. Mrs. McMacken. Aye. Motion carries and the personnel agenda is approved. So no old business and our first item of new business. So first item is um, entering into a shared service agreement with the Upper Valley Career Center uh, to provide them for a food service director for the 22-23 school year. This is something Jennifer has been doing um, for five or six years now, I believe. So she's been doing this for quite a while. Um, they're hoping to have their new person trained this year, and we may not do this going into the future, but we'll see how that works out. But they're trying to get her trained and, and ready to do that. So um, we're going to do it one more year. And the next item that's under that, which we can do separate, we'll go ahead and vote on that first. Sorry. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve this agreement? So moved. Okay, Jeremy. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mr. Frazier. Aye. Mr. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mrs. McMahon. Aye. Okay, motion carries and the agreement is approved. So next item. Next item that's on there is a um, asking for approval of purchasing a floor cleaning machine that's autonomous at Pickle High School. Um, due to the new floors that are being put down, uh, there is a lot more cleaning that has to be done to keep those looking nice. And instead of hiring another person to clean the floors, we've looked into basically having this machine that we GPS enabled. Uh, it will know the routes around the building and mm, it's- We're about in a giant room, but- Correct. <laughs> <laughs> correct. All right. uh, it'll know the routes around the building and it also can't run anyone over and we have some protections in place for so students can't climb on it and you know go for a joyride and those will kind it of things. operate during the day it will be operating about 24 7 except when it needs to recharge or be refilled we, we, we've got to keep those floors scrubbed because part of the thing that we have found is that this floor because of the grit that's in it it likes to hold a lot of dirt and so then it looks dirty really fast and it and it makes all those black streaks and stuff that that we saw so it took us a lot of time to get those out this summer, and so the more that we can scrub that floor, I think the better we can keep it. Working. So, um, it's some things that we're learning as we have a new floor that we haven't haven't worked with before, and so we're trying to figure out the best methods for getting keeping it clean. You know, I saw on this, you got it. You seem to get a good deal because it was less expensive. It's a demonstrator, yep. which usually they treat very well. And the other thing was. Is it going to be a three-year warranty from the time we buy it, not like backdated a year ago when it was made? Correct. So Good. we have the full full factory warranty that comes with it from the date of purchase. Okay. And um, correct. We went out for bid and we got we got bids back in, and then we had this as the the, the least expensive option, and we went ahead and took the demo because we figured we're not out anything. Um, it's it's new and um, we saved like fourteen thousand dollars. So why not do that? So. How will, how will they do with the comments? Hmm? With all the tables and the comments? Uh, it'll know all that. It will absolutely, it will, it, as long as they're set up, right? So if we put the marks and we know exactly where the tables and chairs sit, it will know to do that. If there's something in the way, it will make several attempts to see if it can make its way around it, or it will circumvent that, and then it'll go back onto its normal track. It will find its way back. The comments is one of those areas where you can have it set up with chairs down and chairs up, and so you can change the pattern that will end up happening yeah. in the scenario. So, there, I mean, it's it's pretty <clears throat> slick. Sounds like this can be your new toy. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the spare time to go out and program it, I'd be the one to go out and program it. I'm not OCD, but. Yeah. <laughs>
I don't have the time for that, but I would do it. You know that. <laughs> Any other questions about it? It should be pretty fun. You'll probably, if you're out there, you'll probably see it running around. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the purchase of our new autonomous floor cleaning machine? Yeah. Second. Okay, Jeremy. Mr. Frazier. Aye. Mr. Mitchell. Aye. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mrs. Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries and the purchase has been approved. So moving on to hearing of the public on non-agenda items. I do have one from Mr. Hubbard. And just please tell us your address and what you're here to talk about. I'm uh, Mr. Hubbard. I live at 1106 Walker. And uh, I'm going to talk about the old Wilder School Grounds again. I don't want to beat a dead horse again, but I just want to reiterate how important this is to our entire community around there. It's been rumored, it's been talked about a little bit. Information's hard to find. I went to the city planner. I was having trouble after the last meeting figuring out exactly what was going there. Some people said 20 houses, some people said 30. I go to the city planner and she gives me this. This is 48 residences. You guys have already seen this. I know that back in November. What I didn't know is that you guys agreed to sell that property in that meeting. Is that correct? We agreed to hold that property until they put forth a plan that would go through the commission okay and, and be what what they said it would be so okay but that's even different than their most current one right because I, that, this is what i was given right. that's a between concept. the last meeting and this meeting i have not seen anything else and this is what i was working from and the city planner was pretty adamant about this is going to happen and what i'm concerned about from what i had i didn't look at this yet obviously Oh, traffic. I'm just, I'm just giving. Yeah. Ex ex okay. Traffic and the population is going to be impacted around there. Obviously, what I had was 48 residences. Okay, packed onto one block. There's only 60 houses that face that, in the blocks facing that one city block. And I mean, that's pretty spread out. Everyone's got large <coughs> homes, large yards, everything like this is densely populated, densely packed in in one city block. And with that comes a higher population, more traffic, more cars. And with that comes more danger to the surrounding area, obviously, through traffic. I mean, the population in Pickle right now is 2.43 per household. So that puts us, with 48 homes, it would put us at 116 more people. I couldn't find data for vehicles per household for Pickle, but I found it for Ohio. I would assume it would be higher than the state since we're a rural area, but 2.2 .2 is about what Ohio is at. So we're looking at a, over 100 extra cars for that area. And I just sat back there and listened to some of your people talk about how bad the traffic was around their school at the let-out time. And I mean, you are, you're just expanding on that big time. Especially one city block, all those people, all those cars. At 3 o'clock, I leave for the gym four days a week at 3 o'clock. It's not easy to get through there. And I mean, your people do a great job of getting the kids across the street, stopping traffic. They do a great job. But a block away from there, that's where the close calls come in. They dart out in front of cars. And I've seen this. I've had to slam on my brakes several times. And it's just like you guys are kind of setting yourselves up for something to happen, God forbid. But... I'm just here to, we're not totally against having people in our neighborhood. We're against such a high population, such a high density of traffic and cars and everything that comes with it. And we're not against anything coming into our community. We want to build on our community. We want it to be a safe, something that builds toward the community that we already have. It's established, it's a good neighborhood. We don't want to see that ruined by just throwing up whatever just because we saw one presentation. And I think we can work together, the citizens and the school board and the city, 
we can all work together instead of doing things backhanded. I want this to be an open communication with all of us. Can everybody agree to that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would go toward <coughs> building trust in our community and building a better community overall. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I, you're right. I would, I would stress, and I've said this over and over, like what they presented in that first one was just a concept. So it wasn't or, set. They did have a meeting with some people that, that were down there that gave some feedback about green space and such, and that's where that second drawing came from. They're looking at that now as a possible concept. Okay. But I don't think there's anything set in terms of the number of houses or anything like that because nothing's been taken to the Planning Commission, if I understand. So but, if, well, I spoke to the city planner two weeks ago, and that's what she gave me. Sure. And I spoke to her for probably 20 minutes, half hour, and she was adamant this was what this was going to be pick what needs housing and that's what is going there and that's what is going to be was what she handed me and i was would you like to come up and sure. respond to that i it's my understanding that that's a concept and that's not set in stone and there was that so i, I want to make sure i'm speaking on behalf of the project correctly so absolutely so i'm paul overdorf from the city manager um i appreciate you coming and expressing your concerns uh, it's feedback like that that's really important to get the right mix of new development or redevelopment. Um, just to be clear, though, that is a concept, and while, while the planner may have um, exuded some interest in what's going on and, and is very passionate about the work, she is not the final authority of what goes on that site. That would be the planning commission. And so there'll be an opportunity when the concept goes from, um, you know, something that one of the three iterations of drawings they have to the final concept 30 percent drawings of the planning commission and you'll have a, t a time at that time to speak to the planning commission express your concerns before then you know come to the city and talk about uh, if you do have um, obvious concerns about traffic there'll be a traffic study done to understand the impact um, that'll all be based on whatever their final representation will be for the site but really the proper place to express those concerns would be at the Planning Commission because they really have the regulatory authority uh, when it comes to approving things that meet our, our comprehensive plan as well as our new code PICWA, which will be out by the time that goes to the Commission. Then after the Planning Commission approves it or disapproves it, if they're to approve it and move it forward, it would go to the City Commission and it would be on their agenda for three readings. So that means for six weeks, it'll be out in the public purview. People can come into three different meetings you know, either support it or have concerns about it. And at that time, those, those five elected officials would, you know, move to either accept it or reject it. So there'll be a lot of public um, discussion and in a lot of different forums. And like I said, before that happens at the Planning Commission, if you do need to get further information, I mean, our offices are open and I believe in transparency. I'm here to make sure that happens. Um, so as things get posted and proposed, it, we're standing up the new city website in September. As those documents become available, they'll be on the website, so you won't have to come and get whatever the, you know, the most current concept is. It'll be available as soon as we have it. Yes. So, so I'm sorry. So, when some places say they've not heard of it or they don't know, it's because it's still just in the concept. So, no like permits have been filed. No plan right. has been proposed. That's why organizations are saying they don't know from the county if that makes sense okay mr bostic i didn't you know when um i went back and looked at that november meeting and i believe what he said was they were going to offer different options to people that might buy there and then what they would do is they would build that so i i don't think the way i took it maybe i'm wrong they're not just going to come in and just like put out 20 to 40 homes. They're going to talk to people, make sure they want to buy it, and then they'll they'll choose like two, three bedroom, upstairs, basement, two car garage, and then they will start building. So, I, you know, I don't know if a number was definitely mentioned at that meeting, if I remember correctly. I think he said they kind of build it as they want. Okay, well, that... I was you would have some bigger, smaller... Sure. I'm sure, not, I get yeah. it, yeah, yeah. It's just going off of what I had, the information I had. So, makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. and anything else while Paul's here that he can? Because I don't know the city end of it, so yeah. processes or anything like that. Yeah. 
Okay. And if, if you have any questions, feel free to call my office, set up an appointment. Yep. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks. Okay. So our next regular meeting will be here on September 22nd at 6 p.m. Can I get a motion to adjourn to so this meeting? Okay, all in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, motion carries and the meeting is adjourned.